Hello, this is Dr. Don Ibbotson of Above and Beyond Christian Counseling. Today, I want to help you deal with the tormenting lies of the demonic realm that may be trying to dominate your thought life. One, let me ask you, do you feel stuck in your walk with God? You want to believe what the Bible says, but feel consistently overwhelmed by guilt, maybe in sh or shame over past sins, or maybe you're having great fear about what lies ahead. Let me ask you, what voices are you hearing? And how can you begin to get out of this rut? The Word of God abounds with wonderful teachings and promises about the goodness of God and, and His bountiful plan for our life. And that's a plan to prosper us, not to harm us, but to give us hope in the future. And that's in Jeremiah 29, 11, one of my favorite scriptures, by the way. Now, we're assured many places in the Word that God works all things together for good, that He's for us, not against us in all things. And we that those are promises that are in, in God's Word. And we either believe them or we don't. Now... Our Heavenly Father also wants us to forget about the past, recognize that our sins have been all forgiven, and, and He also asks and tells us, reminds us that not only does He forgive us of our sin and cleanse us, but He remembers them no more. So He's not going to be reminding us of our past sin. He is also in the middle of every circumstance that we're facing. He'll never leave us nor forsake us, and He will give us wisdom when we ask for it. His desire is that we look ahead with hope and expectancy, walking in faith with Him on life's journey. Now, the demonic realm also has a plan for our lives, and that is they seek to kill, steal, and destroy. Jesus tells us about that in John 10.10. 10. Now, it's important to understand that just as God is impressing His thoughts and desires and His Word upon us in our minds, the demonic realm is also working to dominate our thought life with their vision for what lies ahead. See, they can put thoughts in our mind also. Now, look, our human mind, our human soul man, if you like, our unrenewed mind and memory can be triggered by different things to generate these unholy musings and these thoughts. But we must also recognize that these demon spirits are capable of injecting their thoughts and their lies into our conscious mind. Now, I'd like to take a look at some of the most um, common themes that I hear about from clients, and, and they will help you discern the source of the thoughts as they may bombard you at different times. The first area is reminding you of your past. There may be thoughts like this, quote, you had your chance and you blew it, or you call yourself a Christian, how could you have done that? You are where you are because you cheated on your spouse or you did this or that. Those are the type of thoughts that you might be getting. The second type of torment comes upon you in the midst of your certain of your present situation, trying to build despair in you. For instance, the thoughts might be God will test you and you won't pass the test. God is punishing you for what you're going through this is your payback for what you did in the past. Or it might be, you're all alone in this. You made your bed, now sleep in it. The third area of torment has to do with what may lie ahead, at least as the demons are trying to tell you. You might be getting thoughts like this. Look at bad things are going to happen because you don't deserve to be blessed. Or the situation will never change. Or it might be something like, whatever can go wrong, will go wrong. Now, as I meet with clients, I'm, I'm saddened um, so many times that many have such an unbiblical view of themselves or God or Christ's finished work on the cross. They do not understand or believe the Father's character and nature and His heart for us. Now, the narrow road that leads to life that Jesus talks about in Matthew 7, 13, and 14 is very treacherous if trying to navigate that narrow road if your vision is impaired or faulty. And traumas, traumatic life events, can wait for us as we veer off the course. It's not God over there. It's the devils that are, that are coming against us if we get off that narrow road. Now, how can you begin to counterattack this tormenting thoughts? Once you accept and understand the approach that the enemies of your soul is going to try to take, you're halfway there. You're halfway to victory, understanding that this is how they work. Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians 10.5 that we're to take 
thoughts captive to the obedience of Christ. Now, that's, listen, that's a very proactive process that requires discernment and effort on our part to implement effectively. Your thought life is your responsibility, and your thoughts are just not going to wander into God's corral of protective custody. You alone must round them critters up, okay? That's your job to capture the thoughts. Now, it's important to understand also, though, that you cannot stop thoughts from entering your mind, but you can keep them from staying by replacing the demonically sourced lies with God's truth. Knowing God's word uh, is in what he says about you and his heart for you. Look, at those are critical step. That's a critical first step to securing the victory. You must know it. And then secondly, choose to believe it in spite of your emotions, in spite of how you feel. Because we talked about the demons can mess with our emotions also. Let me give you an example. Maybe you are overwhelmed with guilt and shame of things that you did in, in, in the past. For example, once again, this is happening to you because you had that abortion. Now look at it. The truth in God's word asserts that when we come to Christ... All of our sins are cleansed. God remembers them no more. Now, what does that imply? God's not going to remind you of that past abortion. He doesn't even remember it. Now, listen. Also, though, we need to recognize that demonic kingdom or the devils are masters at reminding you of things. And they can work through others also. If not just your own thought life, they will work and put the thoughts into others' minds to speak out to you. So it's not just your own thought life you need to be aware of. Capturing that lie that the devil's put upon in your thoughts, replacing it with the truth in your mind, standing upon it, and declaring it to the tormentors comprises a very powerful battle plan to counteract what they're trying to do. Let me ask you, are you up? Here's an example of how you might respond. You might declare, quote, yes, I did those things, but Jesus has forgiven me. He's cleansed me, and he remembers my sin no more. You spirits of guilt and shame, you get out of here and leave me alone in Jesus' name. Now, if you do this diligently, if you do this as the, you come with the thoughts coming against you and are still tormented, in other words, you just can't seem to get the victory in this realm of the thought life, you may need to do more. So let's, please, please keep on listening here. You can take the first step if you purpose to believe what God says and not what you're feeling. So it starts with that. Secondly, we cannot trust our emotions because the demons can mess with them through impacting our thoughts. And we've talked about that. Getting our thought life in order is crucial. So our feelings are not used to mire us in guilt, shame, despair, hopelessness, and fear. Now, if you're behind in this area, and then well, listen, just take the bull by the horns and commit to being part of a Bible preaching church as, as well as spending your own time feasting on God's written word. There's no substitute nor shortcut to gaining this knowledge and receiving revelation from the Holy Spirit. Okay, it's part of our journey. It's part of our walk with God. Now, if you're trying to wage these mind battles and consistently find yourself on the losing end, this is the thing I want to emphasize. The source of the torment may be internal rather than simply demons attacking you from the outside. If that's the case, you'll need a different approach to secure victory, one which includes getting deliverance from these tormenting, indwelling demonic spirits. Listen, don't wallow along on your own. Seek competent pastoral counseling and assistance if necessary. If you can't find it where you live or are leery of confidentiality issues, prayerfully consider connecting with us. Contact us. Visit on the on the on the on the internet and the website. Look at some of the client success stories and how we're able to help people. And if that's an option for you and something you want to pursue, we, we would love to try to help you. Hope this has been helpful to you. God bless you.